Friday or Saturday morning exactly why God drew me to this text. It reads as follows, Mark 7, 31 through 35. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There, some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he, Jesus, took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and he touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened and his tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That we don't realize that we've given away. Take it all back. Take your power back. Give us the strength to know that we can, Lord God Almighty. Indeed, come Holy Spirit, yes. Come heavenly dove. With all of your life-giving power, I do pray, touch us, revive us, awaken us, renew us. In the name of Jesus, I do pray, amen. Ephatha, be open. Sometimes what we're open to is not what God has called us to be open to, Ephatha. This is an interesting story because if you go to Mark 7 and you begin to read the whole chapter, now we know Mark was writing to who? The Gentiles. He was writing specifically to the Gentiles. And this particular story, now it is also told in Matthew, but Matthew only of the Synoptic Gospels. Jesus begins this journey in this chapter by going through the fields with his disciples and the Pharisees saying, look, they don't even wash their hands. They're unclean. Don't you follow the laws of Moses? And Jesus is looking at them like, well, what is wrong with you people? And he tells them it's not what goes in the body, it's what comes out that defiles it. Then Jesus goes over to one of their houses and the disciples go, uh, uh, what were you talking about? We didn't quite get it. And Jesus was like, literally, are you guys thick or what? Are you dull? You didn't get it? When you eat food, it goes through your digestive system and comes out for nothing. But what comes out of you when you're interacting with other people, when you get on the phone and nobody's with you, when you're talking to friends that you think don't know who you're talking about, when you're in the grocery store, how you treat someone, when you're at a restaurant, that's what Jesus was talking about. And they kind of went, oh, okay. You know, I, I really hope, but I'm sure it has happened that God hasn't had to call me thick. <laughs> But all of us sometimes, we miss God so terribly because we're looking for something that has a high revelation when it's really just simple. Ephatha, be open to those things of God that you've been missing your whole life. Don't think, none of us have arrived. And Jesus goes on. Now what's important for you to know is Jesus leaves after that encounter, he leaves the region that is considered the Jewish region. He goes over to where the Gentiles are. He encounters the Syrophoenician woman. We all know that story as well, don't we? I just thought that lady was so mistreated. And when I meet our Messiah, I'm going to say, you know, y'all were rough on her. Because even she called her a dog. Not just the disciples, but even Jesus. But then she had what's most important. She had faith. And as he goes on, then we encounter the people bringing this blind and deaf man. Now it says in some parts, this is where the scripture contradicts. He could partially talk. Then you get toward the end, it says he couldn't talk at all. 
this part of being open is God wanting you to remind you what you've been open to. The rhetoric, the religion that has so bound us in ways that we can't connect to truth if we want to. And that's why I prayed for our young people because they're out there fighting in the streets. They understand exactly what religion has done to us. They understand that because of religion, we can turn our backs on the fact that indigenous people were wiped from this land. So why are we going to worry about the Palestinians? We can, because of religion, we can say, okay, slavery was okay. Religion was there the whole time when these atrocities happened. Religion is standing in the way even right now. What you have to have is your connection to that that you know is higher than you. The one that enunciated and spoke this whole realm into existence. Not religion. Jesus said that to the Pharisees. It's your traditions that have tripped you up. Even when you're told to take care of your mom and daddy, you can come up with traditional reasons why not to do what you're supposed to do. And that's what the church has been doing. So many ministers are out there fighting for Israel. I too fight for Israel. Jesus was fighting for his own people and reminded the Syrophoenician woman, I didn't come for you. And when you read that, it's like, well, why did you walk over to their house, Jesus? If you didn't come for them? It was so that we would see these encounters that happen when people who have been oppressed outside of another oppressed system need God too. None of the people outside of Israel are saying they don't need God. They do. But Jesus left the homeland because they were acting like they already had God. And that's the problem. Sometimes we're acting like we already have God and we don't. We're just full of traditions, which Jesus says that makes you full of dead men's bones. Jesus wants you to get this so bad that even when you spit, it's got a little bit of power. He walked through this away from his own people. Guess what? The man did not come to him. The crowd brought him. And father, be opened. Imagine. Now that's an Aramaic word. Historically, that's what Jesus probably spoke was Aramaic. Let's go to the next slide, Kim. I'm not going to keep you long, but I want you to not hear the rhetoric that's all around us, but hear your God. As I sat in, um, I think it was a PhD class with Dr. Mark Ellis, and they talked about the prophetic. And he talked about the prophet was always in exile. When you go and you do your Bible study, the prophets didn't always just sit up beside of them unless they were with other prophets because they were in exile. Because when they came to tell you something, it was something you didn't want to hear. And when people don't want to hear what you have to say, they get mad. They begin to pull the levers of power. They do whatever because they think you're wrong. And as he discusses, Dr. Mark Ellis discussed the, the historical prophetic in the Jewish community. He talked about the co-opting through the Christian community. Because see, when a Jewish prophet came, folks got scared. We will sit and prophesy and nobody's scared. We're thinking, oh, give me a word. Give me a word. When you look at the ancient prophets that came uniquely from the Jewish people, what nobody's saying, give me a word. What we have now are people who want to hear a word that isn't directly from God. Because if you hear directly from God what God needs to say to you, God will blow up your world. You won't know what hits you. God will show you yourself. God will reveal to you what you think you've been doing that is good, that is wrong. God will even show you what around you doesn't even have any life. And then when God tells you, why do you keep all this death around you? Will you respond properly? Or 
if the people had to come and get you and drag you to Jesus, will you be okay with it? Or will you start fighting the people? The one person is trying to say, here, come on, Jesus is over here. You fighting that person. Because your traditions are more comfortable than you walking in the right now power of who God is. And I know that's not totally Presbyterianism, but I'm telling you what, the Presbyterian church will keep dying until you connect to what is life. And the traditions have not kept us alive. They have been what's killing the Presbyterian church. And it breaks my heart. You see some that have broken out of it. They're willing to take that next stand in God and do what God is telling them to do for where they are in church and community. The people said Jesus had done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The problem is when you're speaking and you're already hearing impaired, it sounds kind of garbled. And you know, I went in and even looked at spit and what it means, the properties of it and how they can pull the DNA. And if you have certain de deficiencies and here this man is from the son of God, now, what didn't say he was blind? So imagine if I spit on my finger, go over there and say, Miss Lena, Miss Lena, gonna be like, now, baby, I love you. <laughs> but that's not gonna happen. But that's exactly what Jesus did. Don't hurt those that God sent to help you grow and to heal the wounds from those that didn't love you. And we know how that ends because Jesus starts helping all these people and everybody turned on Jesus at the end. But he went to the Gentile part for a reason. It wasn't that only Israel had salvation. The right to it was for everybody. No matter what the propaganda was in Israel, that they were Jews and separate from the Romans and separate from the Samaritans and separate from the Gentiles. Yeshua was making interconnected decisions that brought people together that was setting up the roadway for all the disciples to do ministry once he ascended to heaven. At Fatha, be opened. Be opened. Religion doesn't open you. It shuts you down to the truth of the word. Religion doesn't open open anything inside it makes you blind to seeing people the way you see them other than trying to make people just like you jesus went about doing good only the jewish people he would say go show yourself because he was in the mode of fulfilling the law bringing all things to an end for the purpose of salvation for the purpose of healing Ephatha, be open. Be open to God. The one thing that breaks my heart is I think the church has been closed to God. We miss what the young people are saying to us. We miss the wisdom of the elders sitting right in our midst. We miss the heartbeat of our own community. And we'll sit in a community and look beautiful and wonderful and pull up with nice cars and stuff and not even think about the people we're passing. And Father, be open. Be open to God doing something different. Because sometimes, just like this man, we've had impairment in our hearing. That means we're not hearing God. And sometimes, dare I say, we don't want to hear God because then we might have to do something different. We might actually have to love the unlovable. We might have to touch someone that we normally wouldn't touch. We might have to sit down and have a conversation and be willing to listen to someone with a different perspective and God say, hear them. Ephatha, be open. Don't shut down anymore to the things of God. Jesus was opening this man to everything he was missing. He could see it. Sometimes I think he could feel the vibrations and talk. But he couldn't hear it. Sometimes we don't want to hear it. Today, you need to learn to hear what thus saith the Lord is. 
And you need to get beyond your belief system of what you think you know and get with the one who knows. Because if I go to God in prayer and I say, well, the Presbyterian Book of Order says, and then it says in the confessions, God will be like, oh, and now, God, you're out of order. When God is wanting you to progress and move forward, God might have to spit on you, put his fingers in your ears to open everything up. God might have to say you can't have nothing but the crumbs off the table. God might have to even call you dull and thick because you can't get it and you should. When you walk away from these things, Will you be like this man, hearing and able to speak? It doesn't even talk about the man being going to Jesus and saying, thank you. I'm just assuming that's what he said. If he knew how to say it. The people marveled. The Gentiles marveled. And then Jesus went back to where he was called to be, the children of Israel. This whole chapter, Mark puts in there for the Gentiles. For you to know that God has never stepped away from any of us. That great God that did the first enunciations and sounds that brought this world into being has not gone away. This world doesn't want that God. And if Yeshua stood up right now in this world, this world would still try to do what it did before, kill him. Because there's no profit to be made. And I'm talking about no profit to be made on one who is a healer, a deliverer, prophet. If you're making money off of it, I'm telling you, you're a false healer, deliverer, and prophet. If you want that real experience with God, get real with this text. Get real with yourself. And Father, be open to hearing what God has to say. And sometimes at least act like you want to hear it. Some people don't want to hear it. They want their three poems and a prayer and go have some chicken and go watch the football games. Yeah, they all laughing here. But the things of God, if you just saw the news, I could not watch the news this week. And then when I realized God took me to this because of the Gentiles, there is no reason to wipe an entire group of people off the face of the earth. And Dr. Mark Ellis has so inspired me as a Jewish theologian, so inspired me. He has stood against his own people concerning this issue. When you go back historically, it was the European nations that oppressed and committed the Holocaust. Why did they give Palestine to them and not a piece of England? They're going to go take a people's homeland and just stroke up as if you have the right now. If you're a good religious person, you're okay with that because God, God said, go in and kill everything. You're, you are stuck in your religion if that is where you're living. Dr. Ellis starts to talk about years and years ago, they started telling the Jewish people, you can't do this to these people. So now church, let me bring it home. We had COVID hit and everybody left the church. And I've heard preachers say, we got to get some, you, some, you know, what's in the seat. Not everybody's coming back to the church. They found their out. God said, Ephatha, be open. Be free. So don't get angry at the young people that don't want to come and participate. Recognize in yourself what it is about you they don't want to be on. Do you make them happy when you're around, they're around you? Or is there joy? Or are you just giving them the dicks? And that's what, not what Christians do. That's not what, you're not unwilling to let people be who they be in God. I know that's a hard shift. I know it's hard. 
I've heard even parents say, I can't get them. They will come on Zoom. They, they are not coming to church. Shift the atmosphere. What in your church doesn't bring life to people? Doesn't strengthen people? Doesn't draw people because you're here. The building doesn't do the draw. It's you. It's you that has to be cleaned up. This building, if it was going to draw people, we would at least get about 40 or 50. The building doesn't draw. If the building was going to draw people, first prayers would be passed, and they probably got 60, under 100 people sitting in that big old church right now with all of the school and all of the people around them. Carver Heights, probably the same thing. The only church in our region I haven't seen like that is New Hope. So you have to examine when you walk in there, don't you feel it? Don't you feel the love of God? Then ask yourself why people don't feel it when they come in here or to your church, wherever you are. And Father, be open to God. Can there's one more slide? A person's tongue can give you the taste of his heart. Be mindful of what we say. Even when we're, we're doing pantry and things, be mindful of what you say to people, irregardless of what they say to you. How are you greeting people? I know it's a rough day at times. We're throwing food. People are moving. But this pantry, I will say the clients were on their best behavior and we were not. And we were not biting at the clients. We were biting at each other. And Fatha, be open. Hear the word now. Hear it. That's the truth. That's the truth about Tuesday. We are called to serve the people in love, in the love of Christ. We are called to be brothers and sisters and kind to each other in the love of Christ. The only person, and I'm not trying to toot nobody's horn, the only person spiritually sensitive on Tuesday was Mother Lena. I walked by her and she said, baby, what's wrong? I hadn't said a word. My face wasn't ugly. What is wrong? And I just said, because I didn't want to give it, put it into the air. I just did it. So I did it. But that she recognized that I walked up a little different than I had before. She recognized the wound. Something had happened. There was a shift. Now, look at each other. Do you recognize that there's a shift or even do you even care? A taste. People get a taste of who you are when you speak. People get a taste of who you are when you start talking to one another. Is it a good taste? Does it set you on edge? What does it do when some people start talking to you? Sometimes you need to recognize when people keep responding to you harshly, it's them, boo, it's you. It's you. And that's a hard urge to fight because I can be a tough cookie myself. But God said you will attract more with honey. And Fatha, be open. May God touch each and every one of our tongues in the name of Jesus. That we would be that drop of honey that people need in their day. Right before they go to bed. When they make that phone call. Like Miss Carolyn. I was so happy to be able to tell her a young lady she's been praying for. That I specifically asked Miss Carolyn to pray for. Who lost her husband. She celebrated him last night. And I was so excited. I said, Miss Carolyn, this is who you've been praying for. And you have prayed her through. That's a big deal. Because Miss Carolyn can say, I don't have time to pray. I got my grandbabies. I'm going to go traveling with Monica. and my mom. No, I know she committed to praying for this woman. I saw the results of our deacon, mother, Carolyn's prayers last night. Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. 
So she got to praying and activated it with a little faith. And my sister, Sheila, I mean, last night she honored her husband who died unexpectedly, beautifully. Kenny and I went, she's like, it's black tie. And I said, you know, I have to go to, go to church on Sunday. <laughs> Beautiful event. But to sit there, now I didn't get up and say, my church member prayed for her and look at her. I didn't do none of that. I sat there and I just started to soak in and just think, I knew Miss Carolyn was rolling over and praying for the sister. The times I've talked to her and she was crying when well, she went on trips because she was so upset. She had, when she rolled over in the bed and said she started crying because her husband wasn't there. And I shared with Miss Carolyn also that she said, sometimes we think people are there to walk with us throughout our life and you've been called to walk with them throughout theirs. And you have to be able to accept that. You get to decide how much joy you have. And Sheila decided she has a whole lot of joy. Miss Carolyn made a decision. She was going to have a whole lot of joy. Miss Lena had a decision to make when her husband passed. Well, she was going to have a whole lot of joy. Babies to go. She was still working, loving her grandbabies. Paul had decisions to make when his brother died unexpectedly, his father. You decide how much joy you have. Yeah, you can be around people and they can make you feel so joyous and stuff. That's because you receive, you decided to receive the goodness of that person. It is you who makes the decision about how much joy you have. And I personally know Dr. Daniel Black, excellent minister. If father, be open. Don't walk around in, in ignorance. You get to decide how much joy you have. And then you can sing, joy is mine, joy is mine, joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind, joy today is mine. Lord, I thank you for revealing Epata, be open. Strengthen us that we will remain forever open to all that you have for us in Christ Jesus. That you would make us even more sensitive to your spirit, God, who would sit here to lead and guide us into all truth. Prepare us that we would be able to deal with that truth that the spirit can tell us and bring to us. Let this word be a blessing, God, that remains until we all part and ascend to you or you retrieve us, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.